I'm in New Zealand in Canterbury. Just arrived here after a four and a half hour drive from Marlborough. First stop, Bell Hill. Amazing. I really didn't know a lot about it, but what a place. I'm mean, just living the dream. Two wonderful people, amazing wines, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, just thinking about uh, Cote d'Or Burgundy, uh, Sherwin Belthausen, and Marcel Geisen. Marcel, how did it happen? This is crazy. Just six acres. You're making compelling wines, wines with real uh, soul passion. Thank you. So the, the whole reason why we're here is limestone. Uh, we, we have got, within the region of the, the Wecker Pass in North Canterbury, we have got beautiful limestone outcrops that we've seen uh, in the driving through and, and um, all beautiful sites where you thought one day there should be grapes grown there. And, and Sherwin and I, we, we kind of found this land back in, in 1997 and um, looked at the site, the exposure faces north, uh, there's enough slope to, to get a better angle for the sun, and, uh, and we thought we had nothing to lose. Mm. Uh, we, we had to try it. We weren't, we weren't very scientific about it. Um, it was really a matter of put a spade in the ground and, and get started, and that was the beginning of the journey, really. An amazing journey, because when you think Burgundy, a producer may have been making wine for two, three, four hundred years, here you are doing something just out of nothing. Mm. Is that the sort of New Zealand spirit? It is. It's that pioneering spirit, and it's that it's that 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 energy and that mm. that that willingness. To, well, it, to to learn about something and to and to and to just put your efforts and your energy into it and and get started. It's a little bit of that ingenuity. It's that it's the number eight wire thing. We just we just get in there and do it. And <clears throat> when you uh, think of your wines, do you think of Burgundy as that the reference? Uh, it is in terms of benchmarking, but we, we, we don't see our wines as being potential copies of Burgundy. They're very much about the site and about the climate. Um, and certainly the vintage variation and the seasonal differences that we have. Mm -hmm. But Burgundy is the benchmark for quality and for structure, for longevity. And, and certainly for the individual um, parcels of land and vineyards, that's, that's really, it's, it's that detail that, that drives us to really get down to the source, which is the soil. And you, and you make the wine yourselves, it's all we handmade. I mean, how many barrels? I was down on the side, like 10 barrels. Uh, uh, nine and a half from <laughs> 2012. And, <a> <laughs> uh, and a few, four barrels of wine. So, so 2012 was a small vintage for us. Um, I guess with the limestone, the, the the obvious choice of, of variety was Pinot and Chardonnay. Mm. Um, the, the, the hope was that we might not only see the varietal influence in the, in the wine, that we're not just tasting a wine that, that smells of Pinot Noir or, or tastes of Chardonnay grape, but that there would be that, that extra sense of place uh, about the mm. wines. And, um, and Gradually, as, as the plants get a little bit older, I mean, wine age um, in New Zealand is something that um, that we think of older wines when they're 15, 20 years old. Uh, it's uh, it's certainly very different to the to the old world, but um, but in the last 15 years, we have seen more concentration in the wines, and that that kind of uh, certain theme of the kind of the little thin red line that, that strings itself through the Pinot Noir and through the Chardonnay where you say vintage variation is there but there's still that, that taste of the place which comes through which, um, which is really exciting at this point in time. And so that place, what does it say? What does the wine say about the place? The limestone, there's more to it. The limestone, the tension, the nervosity, the the aliveness about the wine and and that that length that focus that we we where you have that that clear path and the way the acidity is pinned in the wine it allows the wine to lengthen itself and travel it's just not in one part of the palate but it's actually the skeletal structure of the wine and that's where with the limestone if you can imagine it's calcium it's bones it's the it's the structure and the clays and so on they give muscle and flesh and um, so it's really yeah. about building the body of wine. And that salinity you kind of, mm. that, that comes mm. through, that, that mouse-watering effect you get from, uh, 
from these type of soils, which um, it, it's it's starting to come through in the wine, which is which is really um, yeah really what we what we were hoping for. I think it's all there. So, well, thank you very much for the thank visit you. and the tasting. It was really amazing. It was our pleasure. Thank you very much. Sante. I'm here in New Zealand in the area of Canterbury. I'm at Pegasus Bay with winemaker Lynette Hudson. Just tasted some wonderful uh, wines, particularly the Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs. I know you spent a lot of time in Burgundy. And when I taste your wines, I really get that Burgundian touch. You've worked there a lot. I mean, I love the density of fruit, the richness, but they always remain uh, fresh and structured. What's that all about? That's. Uh... I think that's, um, it's a wonderful opportunity to have experienced Burgundy and understand where they're coming from, take on their philosophies, and New Zealand is so different. We have a different fruit structure, different fruit profile, but Pegasus Bay is a, in this very unique opportunity to work with um, half of their vineyard, which is old vines, own rooted plants, and to have worked with them for the last 20 years gives you amazing insight to so many different parcels, different varieties, and different seasons. Already so to have done 20 vintages here means that it helps me reflect on each new one that's coming, how I've handled them in the past, and all, see all my mistakes all the time, and that just gives you inspiration to try and take all of that knowledge from Burgundy. Not that I want to make Burgundy, I want to make the best expression of New Zealand, but to take ideas, influences, but to give the best expression of our tewa out there here in the winery. So describe, so Burgundy, you worked in some of the great names like Grumier and others. If you were to describe Burgundy with two or three words, what would you say? And if you were to describe your wines from Canterbury, from New Zealand, two or three words? Uh, Burgundy, as I see, is the pinnacle. When it's good, it's so goddamn good. It's amazing. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. Often, you know, you have those wines that aren't that great. Um, here, we have fruit like is indescribable to any other region in the world. Um, the light intensity, I think, impacts on that. Um, so what we can gain from that is to try and build structure and complexity into our wines with that abundance of fruit. It's about taming that to bring in secondary complexing characteristics rather than letting those primary fruit characters dominate. But that gives you over overwhelming overallness due to structure, complexity and fruit concentration and power. And no other other area does that because of that incredible light in this long growing season. Now. Yeah, absolutely. There's no place on earth. Argentina, but not the same varieties, and it's a warm climate compared to there's no other cool climate region of the world, I believe, that has that fruit intensity with that light, in, light intensity as well that can produce structured, complex wines with depth of fruit. Fantastic. It's an exciting place to be. Well, thanks for the great taste, Sam. Tasted some amazing wines. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> great taste.